Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome to week number three. We're in the thick of things now in Biology 120, and we're going to take a look at some cells. So let's see what we did last week. So last week was all about biochemistry, and that's the chemistry of biology or organisms. You learned about the importance of water and the fact that water has many different properties that make it so important and the reason that it is found in every cell. The fact that it absorbs heat, that it's a solvent, that it adheres, that it coheres. Adheres means it sticks to other things and coheres means that it sticks to it, um, other water molecules. Um, and the importance of it in cells. <clears throat> we learned about carbon, an element, which is the backbone of all organic molecules. And the reason for this is because it forms very complex and large structures. Then we learned about the organic molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We're going to need these terms from now on. So this is the reason that we're studying some chemistry at the beginning of this course, because we're going to talk about those nucleic acids again. We're going to talk about proteins again and carbohydrates and lipids as we go along. This week, you're going to learn about phospholipids which make up cell membranes. You're going to learn about peptidoglycan. So peptides are small proteins. Glycan means sugar. Uh, this is an essential molecule in the cell walls of bacteria. So you're going, to, you're going to learn more about different types of molecules as we go along. So this week our topics are classification, types of organisms, and cell structure. So classification, what is that? That's putting things into groups that make sense. So like things we put together in different groups, we do this naturally as human beings. If you walk into a brand new room that you've never been in before and you see a chair, the first thing you do is not go over and gnaw on the leg of it because you think it might be food. Nope. You go and sit in it because you have seen chairs before. You know what chairs are for. You know the purpose of them. You know why we have them. You know how they behave, right? So this is a kind of silly example, but that's literally how our brains work. Oh, I see a chair. I know what chairs are for. So we do this in science too. We group organisms together. And that way we can predict their behavior. We know how they're going to work, how they're going to act, uh, what types of things they're going to do. We start out with classification with the three domains. Domain Eukarya, which includes plants, animals, fungi, and protists. Well, that's most of the life forms on the planet right there. So all organisms in the domain Eukarya are called eukaryotes. We have complex cells. We have organelles like a nucleus. So an organelle is a little compartment in a cell. So we have nuclei. We have mitochondria. We have chloroplasts if we do photosynthesis, which human beings don't do, of course. Endoplasmic reticulum. We have Golgi apparatuses, etc., etc. We have different little compartments in our cells. And you contrast that with the two domains of bacteria, the domain eubacteria and the domain archaea, and these both contain bacteria and they don't have those little organelles. Bacteria don't have nuclei. A nucleus is way bigger than a bacterial cell, so of course they can't have those. The domain eubacteria contains all the true bacteria that we would normally come in contact with in our everyday lives. So bacteria that live in water, that live in the soil, that live in and on our bodies, that live in our food, those are eubacteria. And then the other bacteria in the domain archaea are the archaeobacteria, which live in very extreme environmental conditions, down in the depths of the ocean, in the most acidic bodies of water in the saltiest bodies of water on Earth. Now, normally we don't come in contact with them, but those are the archaeobacteria. Okay, and we're also going to learn about cell structures. I just explained that eubacteria, you, sorry, eukaryotes have lots of different compartments in cells. 
but bacteria have much simpler cells. They don't have little compartments in them. So even their DNA is just floating around in the cell. And the differences in the cell structures between bacteria and our cells makes it a bit easier to develop drugs to kill the bacteria that are infecting us and not kill us. We'll get to that in a minute. So the chapters for you to read this week are chapters 21, the first section, which is all about classification, and then chapter 4, which is all about different types of cells, including bacterial, also called prokaryotic cells, versus eukaryotic cells and those cell structures. Don't forget to use your textbook. This is a handy resource. It is free. It is searchable. It is awesome. Go to your textbook as a, your main resource in this course. Okay, read the Module 3 overview, and there are several videos for you to watch, so do watch those. Um, and also watch the video that I have in this announcement, the Harvard Antibiotic Resistance in Bacteria Study, because it is absolutely astounding. Um, the experiment is really, really neat. Um, they put down some auger in a huge, gigantic sheet, and they have the zones in the auger that have different amounts of antibiotic in them, going from none to one, the normal dose of an antibiotic that would kill the bacteria that they've inoculated on the auger, to 10 times that antibiotic, to 100 times, to 1,000 times. And you will see in this video how fast antibiotic resistance happens. In fact, in 11 days, there are bacteria that can su survive a thousand times the normal killing dose of an antibiotic, which is absolutely amazing. But I do want you to see this, so please watch the video. All right, well, what do you have to do this week? You have some discussion board postings, and you always have your initial posting where you answer the main body of the questions. It's always due by Thursday evening before midnight, and then your two response posts to two of your classmates are due on Sunday evenings. So, in your discussion board postings, you're going to be discussing why antibiotics, which are drugs that kill bacteria, they don't kill viruses, they don't kill fungi, etc. Why do antibiotics target bacterial cells and not ours? So this is a drug that we take into our bodies to kill bacteria that are infecting us. One of the major properties that antibiotics have to have is that they don't kill you. Because you can take, you know, lots of different chemicals into your body and kill the bacteria, but the problem is the drug, the Clorox, oh, I've heard so many crazy things over my lifetime. Um, all different kinds of things that you can take into your body to kill bacteria will also kill you. So it, that's not exactly the point of an antibiotic. So the issue is that antibiotics target cell structures in bacteria that we either don't have or ours are different. Also, some of the antibiotics target um, metabolic processes, like the production of folic acid that we don't have. So antibiotics have to target something different in bacteria. You're going to look that up and figure out what those different structures are. You're also going to discuss how our use of antibiotics increases antibiotic resistance and produces superbugs like MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That is just one example, but there are plenty of examples of superbugs out there. So what is it that we do that causes this phenomenon? Because we do. We overuse antibiotics to start with. Um, they should never be prescribed for a viral infection, for example. But a whole lot of people, when they go to the doctor, they don't want to hear that their sore throat is caused by a virus. I know one time I had horrible, 
horrible sore throat, couldn't swallow. And I was teaching in a classroom, went to the doctor and they said, I don't have a strep throat. You have a viral infection. And I just went and sat and cried in my car because um, I couldn't take anything to make it better. I was just going to have to get well on my own. That's how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. In your response posts, you're going to talk about antibiotic use in livestock. So most of the antibiotics that are produced and used in this country are fed to our food animals, which is an amazing statistic. So why is that? Because it grows bigger cows, it, chickens lay bigger eggs, um, these animals don't get sick as often because they're housed so very closely together. There are all kinds of reasons that we use antibiotics in livestock and our farm animals and food animals. So what are the risks and what are the benefits to doing this? Um, there's a big push, especially in the last few years, to stop doing this. And if you've been to the grocery store, you see this when you look at packages of meat. If you eat meat, um, you can buy a package of chicken that has never been exposed to antibiotics. It will say that on the label. Now you're going to pay a hefty price for it. I know I about have heart failure when I go to buy a pack of chicken breasts and it's over $11. That um, makes you sort of choke, but um, this is responsible uh, food animal production because we don't want to use antibiotics any more than we have to. So you're going to be looking that up and discussing it in those response posts. Then you're also going to begin your final project this week. So number one, you have to choose a topic. I talked about this last week in my video. So if you did not see that, go back to the announcement last week, fast forward through it until I get to the topics and um, take a look at that. So if you don't find a topic in the list that tickles your fancy, then email me with another idea for a project topic. And uh, in last week's video, I gave you a few extras like microplastics because that is such an important pollutant now and will be worse in the future. Light pollution, but there are so, so many. So what is a a problem, an issue having to do with, in some way, with biology. Um, that will be your final project. So first of all, you got to choose a topic. And then you have to start your project. So you're going to do some research. I encourage you to use the Shapiro Library because it is so easy to search uh, resources and inf for information in the library. So I encourage you to do that instead of just doing a Google search. That drives me crazy. Don't just do a Google search. Find some relevant, effective um, sources that will help you with this information. Some good resources. That's why you looked at that in week one. What are good resources? Instead of just doing a Google search and using the first couple that come up. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at Milestone 1 Guidelines and Rubric because this will describe to you the format that you're going to use and what information you need to include. I cannot stress enough for you to use the correct format if because I'm looking at that and I'm grading that along with the information. So in this case, for Milestone 1, you have three milestones for your final before you put together your final project. This is the first one. You're going to use the outline format and the categories are given to you. Introduction. So that's a paragraph. The introduction. One dot introduction. Okay? Then you write a paragraph introducing this topic to your audience. And your audience you could assume, of course, is me because I'll be grading it, but also people that you would present this to. For example, your classmates or some civic group or, you know, who knows. You assume that they don't know too much biology 
because you're going to, of course, include the biology for this project. So that's your sort of audience. All right, so it's an outline format. So you've got introduction, and then under that, you've got topic. And under the topic, you have where does this occur, how does this occur, and who benefits from this. Okay, there's always someone, some being, some organisms that benefit. From your topic. So if you're talking about eutrophication of a lake, which is where you have an algal bloom, something like that, because there are too many nutrients being dumped into it, obviously the algae are benefiting from all this nutrient overload, right? Also people benefit because all they're doing is just letting everything run off into the lake. So who benefits? Which organisms benefit? All right, label your sections. That is so important. This is not an essay. This is an outline. So the outline includes paragraphs under each section that's required to describe to me what is going on. Wait a minute. There you go. Sorry about that. So here's Milestone 1 Guidelines Rubric. There's a list of topics, went through the, that last week. Here's what I described to you, the introduction. Now, look under introduction. You see how it says describe the topic you selected? This is not three or four words. A description is a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs describing light pollution. What is light pollution? Why is it important? Why should anybody be concerned about it, right? Topic where describe the primary locational sources, which ecosystems are affected, biomes, the biosphere, um, just one particular location like Lake Erie, something like that. Um, so you see how you're looking at those keywords, analyze the processes. So this is not just a couple of words. You're describing this. You're explaining this to me in paragraph form. But you also notice that you have these headings. One, introduction. Two, topic. To A, where. To B, how. To C, who. So label those sections. Okay. Um, I've already described this to you, but I will give this to you as tip of the week, too. Always put your assignments in the correct format. Well, where do you find this? How are you supposed to know? How are you supposed to know? Um, you go to the guidelines and rubric. So the guidelines include the instructions and the rubric tells you how it's going to be graded, right? So follow that. That's very important because that tells you what you're supposed to do and how it's going to be graded. And I've already explained that this is an outline for milestone one. It should be a Word document or something similar. It doesn't have to be Word, but anyway, it has to be a Word document or something similar. Please use double spacing because it makes it easier for me to read. Don't cram everything up, um, jammed up next to each other. Make it easier, easy for me to read because I have to read 20 of these. 12 point font, okay. I don't really care about the specifics of the font. Just make it readable. One inch margins. I'm not measuring margins. Just make it readable. Uh, minimum of one page. I can't imagine it would even be one page. It's got to be at least two pages. And then the references are extra. For every one of the milestones, you're going to have at least three references. So don't forget that. You've got to use some resources to back up what you're saying, right? This is not just your opinion. Very few people on this earth care about you just talking about your opinion. You've got to back up what you're saying with what other people have found. That's why you do the research. Um, use in-text citations. So when you've got information from somewhere else, make sure you give them credit and use the APA format um, with that and then also with your reference page. And you'll have a reference page for every one of these milestones and then also for your final project. All right, so that's it for this milestone one. I'm making a big deal out of it because it's part of your final project. 
So you get graded on the pieces of the final project and then you put them all together and you get another grade. Uh, you will get feedback from me to help you correct these and fix them so that what you put into the final project is A-OK. -okay. If you need any help this week, all you have to do is email me. There's my name. There's my email address again, m.sigmund at snhu.edu. Just let me know. Uh, if you want to use a different topic besides the ones on the list, just let me know. But I need to know ahead of time. Don't surprise me with it because it may not be okay. Okay, so let me know if you need anything this week. I hope that you have a wonderful week and just let me know if you need anything.